In this video, we're going to look at redox titration. We're going to talk about what standardization is, why we do it, and then we'll look at an example in which we first standardize our titrant and then use that titrant to analyze a sample. Often in our analysis um, involving redox titration, we use um, solutions like potassium permanganate and uh, potassium dichromate. Potassium permanganate is a great uh, oxidizing agent if there is hydrogen ions present. Um, so if we were to prepare a solution of potassium permanganate with no hydrogen ions in the solution, so just make it with water, theoretically we could store that for a really long time. However, over time what starts to happen is carbon dioxide can enter our solution uh, and when carbon dioxide mixes with water, it actually forms carbonic acid. This carbonic acid is going to release some hydrogen ions. And those hydrogen ions, when they work their way into our solution, are going to cause a spontaneous reaction with water. That means that over time, the concentration of permanganate that we believe is in our solution is going to decrease. And so we need to figure out what the actual concentration of permanganate, permanganate is right before we use it. And to do that, we often use something called a primary standard. A primary standard is typically made from a solid and the solid is non-hygroscopic. That means it won't, dissolve, won't absorb water from the air, so its molar mass won't change. There's lots of primary standards that we can use for these titrations. Um, and this is a technique that's used in acid-base titration as well because some things like sodium hydroxide are quite hygroscopic. Um, and so in analysis here, we take this, we typically prepare a solution of our primary standard with a known mass. And then we titrate that with our um, titrant. That allows us to determine the concentration of the titrant right before we use it. And then we can use the titrant for any further analysis. We want to make sure that we do this primary standardization pretty much right before we want to analyze our samples. Um, otherwise, the concentration could change as it's stored for any significant period of time. Okay, we're going to go through a slightly more complex example than what we saw in the last video. Um, this example is going to involve two titrations as well as two solution preps. Um, but if we break it down into what's happening at each step, it's no more complex in terms of calculation than anything you've seen before. So uh, in this problem, to determine the concentration of tin in a five gram sample of solder wire, a student performs a redox titration. Great. So that's our end goal is to determine that concentration of tin. Um, first, they prepare an acidic iron to ammonium sulfate hexahydrate solution. So that is a very complex sounding name for a compound. Um, and we can break that compound down. So ammonium, or sorry, iron to ammonium hexahydrate looks like this. So we have two ammoniums, two sulfates, and then six waters. That's where that hexahydrate comes from. So that is our iron to ammonium sulfate hexahydrate. Um, and we're going to prepare an acidic solution of that by dissolving 2 grams of the solid in sulfuric acid and diluting to 50 milliliters. So we're just going to draw out what's happening in this uh, so that we can make sure we're keeping track of 
the process. So we have our solid iron to ammonium hexahydrate and we have two grams of this solid. That's going to get dissolved in water and then diluted to uh, 50 milliliters, uh, probably in a volumetric flask because that's typically what we use to prepare solutions. So we have our volumetric flask and we are going to have a 50 milliliter solution And we'll color that green because iron two is a little bit green. Um, so that's the first part there. It then says a 10 mil aliquot of this primary standard. So an aliquot is just a sample of the whole. So typically we would use probably a volumetric pipette to aliquot 10 mils or to take 10 mils of um, that sample. Uh, and that sample is going to be titrated. So we're going to take that 10 mil aliquot. We're going to put it into likely a volume or a, an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, and that's going to be titrated with our potassium permanganate. And we're told that to reach the end point um, of our potassium permanganate titration. Uh, we required 14.35 uh, milliliters. So we have our potassium permanganate in our um, burette, and we are adding 14.5 milliliters of this, or sorry, 14.35 milliliters of this drop by drop into our flask until we reach the end point. And in this case, the end point is likely going to be a pale pink. That entire process is going to allow us to determine the concentration of the permanganate. So that's kind of part one of our titration. That is our standardization. Part two of the titration is where we then use our standardized solution to determine our actual goal. So in part two, we're gonna take a five grand sample of solder wire. So we're gonna take our wire and that's gonna be 5.00 grams. Solder wire is gonna be a mix of a bunch of different metals. Uh, we're going to assume that tin is the strongest reducing agent of those metals. So that's going to be dissolved in uh, sulfuric acid again, um, and then diluted to 100 milliliters in a um, volumetric flask. Tin is not a colorful um, ion, so we'll just give it kind of a generic blue color. Um, so we have a hundred mil solution of our acidified tin now, and we're going to take that solution and we are going to take again, a 10 milliliter aliquot. So using our volumetric pipette, we're going to take a 10 mil sample of that, um, tin solution. Uh, and we're going to, uh, titrate that with our potassium permanganate. So into an Erlenmeyer. Uh, and again, potassium permanganate is gonna be in our burette. Um, and this is requiring 10 0.60 milliliters to reach again a light pink end point. And so we're now going to be able to take this information and work backwards to determine how much tin is in this solid wire. So it may still seem quite complicated, but we're going to go through step by step. So we're going to start with part one of our titration, and then we'll look at part two after we've solved for this concentration. 
Okay, so we are gonna break this into two almost separate problems, and we're gonna use the answer from the first problem to solve the second. So the first problem is just a very straightforward solution preparation and then dilution. Uh, we first need to know what the uh, titration, uh, net titration equation is gonna be. Now, with a titration, it's always good to do the five-step method, but you can kind of take a shortcut. Uh, iron two is a really good reducing agent, um, and permanganate, is going to be our um, oxidizing agent. So I'm gonna skip a little step here and I'm just gonna write our net reaction so that we have a starting point. So our net reaction is going to be uh, the reduction of permanganate ions in the presence of acid. And that acid is coming from that sulfuric acid that the iron is dissolved in. Uh, this is gonna react with five iron two plus ions to form iron three plus, uh, manganese two plus, and water. So that's our net reaction. And we really, really care about the mole ratio between permanganate and iron. So we don't have a one written in, but we could put a one in front of permanganate so that we have a one to five mole ratio. So now we're gonna do um, two steps in this solving, solving process. You could do this in one, but I'm gonna break it into two just for clarity. So step one is going to be to determine the concentration of iron two ions. Okay, so um, I need the uh, formula again for the iron ammonium sulfate hexahydrate. This is one iron atom, two ammoniums, two sulfates, and six waters. This has a molar mass of 392 0.21 grams per mole. So I'm going to take that to two grams of solid and I'm going to divide it by the molar mass. I'm going to use unit analysis just for clarity here, but you could also do this in steps using formulas. Don't need to make this quite as long. All right, so with my unit analysis here, the grams are going to cancel. So all I've done here is moles equals mass over molar mass. So I have the moles of the iron compound. Now it's a one to one mole ratio. There's one mole of iron in this compound. So if I find the concentration of the compound, I also know the concentration of the iron. So I'm now gonna divide that by the total volume of the solution I prepared which was 50 milliliters. So I made a 50 milliliter, or the student made a 50 milliliter primary standard. Uh, so now we have moles per liter. And so this is just concentration is moles divided by volume. And we do want this in moles per liter. And then if we wanna just be sure for an extra step, we know that we have one mole of iron two plus for every one mole of our compound. And so this, um, you don't have to do because it is one to one, but it just shows that you understand um, that it is a one to one mole ratio there with our solid. Uh, so our final units will be moles per liter. And that's going to give us 0 0.10, and I get two sig dig or three sig dig, 0 0.102 moles per liter. Uh, I'm going to keep the full number in my calculator, which is 0 0.101986 and it keeps going. Um, but I'll just write down the uh, abbreviated answer here. So now that I know the concentration of my iron, I can now solve for the concentration of my permanganate. So 
So we're going to take the concentration of iron we just solved for, that 0 0.102, and again, not going to round in my calculator. Um, so I have 0 0.102 moles of iron 2 plus per liter. My solution that I actually titrated is 10 milliliters. So aliquot just means a sample of the whole. So I'm going to take 10 milliliters of this. Now I don't need to worry about the uh, converting to liters here because my units will cancel, which I'll show in just a second. Uh, so here moles equals concentration times volume and the liters will cancel. So technically I have millimoles here, millimoles of iron. Uh, I'm gonna multiply this by the mole ratio. So from my balanced reaction, I have one mole of permanganate for every five moles of iron two. So now I have my uh, moles of permanganate and then I can just divide that by the volume of my permanganate, which was 14 0.35 milliliters. And so I'm left with, uh, in terms of units, my moles of iron will cancel. Uh, moles of permanganate per liter. And the reason that I don't need to worry about the milliliters is that conversion factor was can is gonna cancel between the two milliliter units there. And so I can put a little one on top here just for clarity. That gives me a concentration of 0 0.0142 moles per liter. And that's the number that I'm going to carry forward to the second part of this problem, which is the concentration of the tin uh, solid. Okay, so uh, now that we know the concentration of permanganate, we're going to be able to do our second part, which is preparing our, our tin solution and um, determining the concentration of the tin 2 ions in that solution. So there's actually two redox reactions in this second step. The first redox reaction comes from dissolving the solid tin itself. Uh, and so for that redox reaction, uh, we're going to have the following. So when we take our solid tin and we dissolve it in sulfuric acid, uh, we're able to oxidize the solid tin to tin 2 plus. And we don't actually need this reaction other than to know that it's a one to one mole ratio for our tin and tin 2 plus. So that's really all that we care about there. We're going to assume that we have tons and tons of excess sulfuric acid. So there'll still be lots left over after our first reaction. The second reaction we're going to have is the oxidation of tin 2 by the permanganate. And in this reaction, uh, we'll need two permanganate ions. For every five tin 2 plus ions, it's a two, 5 to 2 or 2 to 5 mole ratio. So the tin 2 plus ions are oxidized to tin 4 plus and the permanganate ions are reduced to uh, manganese 2 plus. And this is the actual reaction we care about in terms of our titration. And we need to know that two to five mole ratio. So we're gonna take this now and we are going to work backwards to ideally figure out the mass of solid tin that was in our original sample. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the tin concentration um, in our solution in the sample. So we're gonna start with our permanganate. 
So we know the volume of permanganate and now we know the concentration of permanganate from the last um, titration. So we can take that concentration, that 0 0.0142, and again, I'm not gonna round um, in my actual calculator when I do the math, I'll carry the number forward. So 0 0.0142 moles of permanganate per liter and uh, 10.6 milliliters was added to reach the end point. So just to keep track of units here, the liters part will cancel. So we currently have millimoles of permanganate. We can then multiply by our mole ratio. So in our mole ratio, uh, permanganate will go on the bottom because it's what we know more about. So we have two moles of permanganate on the bottom here. Uh, and then tin is going to go on the top because it's what we're solving for. So 5 moles of tin 2 plus. So now we have millimoles of tin. So my moles of permanganate are going to cancel here. And we have millimoles of tin 2 plus. We're now going to divide this by the volume of tin that was titrated, which is 10, a 10 milliliter aliquot. So 10 milliliters of tin. The uh, milli conversion factor is going to cancel here and our final units are going to be moles of tin 2 plus per liter which is exactly what we want here and we get a tin 2 concentration of 0 0.0377 and again that's rounded but that's okay uh, we'll just keep the full number in our calculator so now that we know the concentration of tin we're gonna find the mass of uh, solid tin in our total solution. So we titrated a 10 milliliter aliquot, but since we know the concentration in that aliquot, we can assume the concentration is the same in that full 100 milliliter sample. So first we're gonna take that 0. 0377 moles per liter of tin 2 plus and we're going to multiply it by the uh, 100 milliliters of our uh, solution that we prepared that's going to cancel out those liters so now we know how many moles of tin 2 plus were present because of our first redox uh, reaction that we have up top we know that we have one mole of solid tin for every one mole of tin two plus. So that now tells us how much tin we have. And then to figure out the mass, we're just gonna multiply by the molar mass. And the molar mass of tin is 118.71 grams per mole. And again, we can just keep track of units here. So moles of tin will cancel and we'll be, we'll be finding grams of tin. And we get 0 0.447 grams of solid tin were in the original sample. And so the end goal here is to figure out the percent weight by volume of our tin. So that's gonna be the final step we have here. So percent weight by volume is just going to be the mass of tin divided by the total mass of the wire times 100. So we're going to have our 0 0.447 grams of tin divided by the 5 grams of the wire and multiply that by 100%. And that's going to give us a percent weight by volume of 8.94%. So it's a little bit of a long problem, but breaking it down, there's no one part that's any more complex than anything you've done before. It's just a matter of keeping track of numbers and making sure you put the correct volume with the correct um, species 
and you kind of plan a process out to solve it before you start doing any of the math. 